Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, this video is variations on a theme. And what I mean by that is we've got this color preamp that we just built. And there's various ways of building this depending on what you plan to use it for. And so this one was built specifically for a viewer who wrote to me and said, hey, I've got a couple of solid state mono blocks that have no volume control. All they got on them is a power switch. And I need some sort of a preamp to have a volume control and I want to introduce some tube sound to it and my source is going to be one of those streamer boxes. He said, not planning on really doing any kind of phono stuff, not planning on doing, you know, anything other than like a streamer box DAC unit and then these two stereo mono blocks. So that's what made me think this would be perfect. And as fate would have it, somebody else wrote me and said, hey, I've got all the parts to build this color preamp that I was going to do, and I've even fabricated the chassis, and if you'll build it on your channel, I'll just donate the whole thing to your channel, and you can keep the preamp or sell it or whatever you want to do. So this was perfect. Somebody donated this to me. We've built it. We can do a nice review and a, all of that on it, and then I can then sell this to another viewer who needs it to finish up his system. So let's get back to this variations on a theme. When I built this one, A, I knew we had a streamer ahead of this thing that has a variable output. All those streamers and DACs have some way of adjusting the volume coming out of them into the next device in the chain. Okay, so then I knew that he had a pair of mono blocks that had no volume control on them, so we needed a volume control, which we've got right here. And then on this case, we've got two mono blocks. Okay, one of the things about this color preamp is you really want to be able to adjust the amount of color that you're putting into the sound. And how you do that is varying how much input signal is going into this box versus how much is coming out and how much gain you're asking of the preamp for the next stage. So in this case, we have a DAC with a volume control on it. Then we have this color preamp and then we have the mono blocks with no volume control. So how this is going to work is the amount of color that's created by this preamp is directly related to how hot the signal is coming into this and how much gain or how much drive the input triode is providing. Now it's providing a fixed amount of gain but it's not providing a fixed amount of drive that it's being asked of so if you put a hot signal into this box, it's going to drive that input triode harder, which is going to have a little more harmonic distortion. And then we adjust the amount of gain with this knob on the output going to the amplifiers. So let's say we have the DAC set wide open and you know, a comfortable listening volume is about a third volume on this knob. And we decide it sounds a little too syrupy, like there's a little too much of this harmonics going on. All you'd have to do is turn down the output of the DAC sum, then turn the gain up on the output, and then you've reduced the amount of harmonic distortion that this box is creating. And I hope that makes sense to you. So there's several different scenarios that this box could be used in. So let's say that you have a CD deck and 
you have an integrated amplifier with a volume control. So in that case, you can't adjust the output of the source. Or let's say a phonostase that's got a fixed output. So what you might want to do is change the way the schematic's done or where the volume control is on this preamp. So here's the original schematic. And you can see the volume control is on the output. And that's what we built for this viewer for his specific use case. So if you have a CD deck with a fixed output and then you have a integrated amp with a volume control, what you might want to do instead is build it like this and put a volume control on the input and that controls how much drive or how much signal is going into that first triode. And then on the output, just have a fixed resistor and let the amplifier that's being driven set the impedance of the preamp. So like if you have a amplifier that's got a 20K impedance, then that's the load that the preamp will see. And there's no reason to multiply that impedance by putting a low value resistor on the output of the preamp. We just want enough resistance to drain off any potential leakage that may be coming through the coupling cap to make sure there's no DC on the output of it. And a one meg resistor should be plenty. And again, this way, the device being driven sets the impedance of the output on the preamp. And I hope that, that makes sense. So in this case, you can use the volume control on the input to control how much drive the initial triode is seeing. And then you can use the volume control on your integrated amp to then control the volume that's coming out of the preamp and into the amplification stages of your amplifier, just like you normally would. So a third case scenario would be a combination of both. So let's say you've got a fixed output device, again, like a CD deck, and then you've got a pair of mono blocks or a power amplifier that has no volume control on it. You might want to wire it up like this, where you have a volume control on the input and then another volume control on the output. And that way you can adjust between the two pots to get the amount of harmonic distortion that you want to add into the sound that may vary depending on the kind of music you're listening to. Some smooth vocals might sound better with a little more harmonic distortion, but then some really metal kind of music might sound better with less or might sound better with more. I don't know. That's the kind of thing that you can play with, though, when you have these kind of adjustments. And to me, that's the cool thing about this kind of a amp buffer thing. And actually, it goes a step beyond a buffer that you can add harmonic distortion, the good kind, at the level you want by controlling the input versus the output across these tubes. And so again, this is a decision you're going to have to make depending on what kind of system you have and what kind of controls you have in place. For me personally, if I was going to build one for one of my systems, they all have volume controls on them right now. And so I would probably build it with this on the input rather than the output. So I could control how hot the signal is going to the tubes and then the volume control on the integrated amp would control the sound pressure level, you know, in the room with the speakers being driven and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, this circuit's got a lot of possibilities. The other thing that might be worth experimenting with is I saw this preamp that similar kind of thing. And this is a schematic that they posted in their instruction manual. And you can see what they did is they put the volume pot between the two stages of the tubes. 
And when I've talked about this on a forum, someone else suggested that. I haven't experimented with it. But it looks like you could, looks fairly simply, put a 100K volume pot between the two stages and control the volume there. But again, have to do more study on that, see what that might do to the frequency response and all that kind of stuff. So you do have to be careful with that. But I just wanted to throw that other thing out there. If you're the breadboarding experimenting type, you might try sticking the volume pot between the two stages and see what that sounds like. So hopefully I've inspired some of y'all to start playing around with this stuff, especially if you've never done tube stuff and maybe you don't want to go, you know, full boat and build an EL34 or 300B or, you know, some kind of push-pull, you know, power amp, but you still want to kind of experiment and see what tubes sound like. I think this really does give you that and I would also say that I'm not really sure how much tube sound you get out of those tube buffer type devices that are basically just a cathode follower and I do have some circuit boards to play around with that in future videos but for now I think this is the route that I would recommend to people this isn't that complicated a project to build and with a little ingenuity you can tailor this thing to work perfect for your system so hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you enjoy the content on my channel if you do please subscribe please like the video please comment that helps things too also thank you patreon subscribers really appreciate you as well as people that have made donations to my website and to viewers that have donated things like this to the channel so I can bring these cool projects to you. So, until next time, have a nice day.